Good morning, everybody. Mark Finan here in the Home Weather Office on this Tuesday morning. It's the 15th day of April 2025, and this is the morning briefing. Yeah, halfway through the month of April now, tax day. As I look out the window from the Home Weather Office, I have some high clouds out there. Temperatures are running a little bit cooler today. There's a pretty thick marine layer. We had some onshore breeze yesterday. Downtown Sacramento came this close to hitting 90 for the first time this year. Instead, topped out at 89. From here, temperatures will trend cooler, comfortable though, and still at or above average for this time of year. So anything you have planned outdoors is gonna be just fine. So today, we're gonna to be taking a deep dive into thunderstorms, and I'll show you a parameter that I haven't talked about before, why some areas today will see thunderstorms, or may see thunderstorms, and other areas will not. Again, something I have not covered before. So if you want to deep dive into other weather parameters, today is your lucky day. All right, let's start off with the satellite this morning. A couple of things going on here. We have this bit of cloud cover, these high thin clouds coming in, but look at the marine layer from Southern California pushed well inland. Same thing through the Salinas Valley and then through the Bay Area. So you have this, we have an onshore breeze, all of that helping to combine for what is going to be a cooler day. So above all of that, we have the high clouds coming in and you also have this low spinning around down in here. So we have this cutoff low down here, spinning the moisture up our way. So we have an increase in moisture coming our way. So that's one of the ingredients that we need to have some thunderstorms pop up this afternoon. You need a little bit of moisture in the air so that you get the lift and that lift helps to make the clouds and the thunderstorms and all that sort of thing. So let's take a look at this mess on the 500 millibar chart before we get into the detail of the thunderstorms. All right, so here is that cutoff. And again, you can see that flow at 18,000 feet coming up from the south, this low spinning around in here. And then as we head through the day tomorrow, that low hangs around and eventually by Thursday is replaced by north flow that will help to shut down the chance of thunderstorms as except maybe on the east side of the Sierra and maybe down toward Mammoth with that sort of flow on Thursday. Uh, but this sort of flow would be cooler but dry for areas like uh, Tahoe is certainly for the valley. A little bit of ridging here at the end of the week, but then a little trough goes by that doesn't do anything for us. But this pattern will keep temperatures lower than what we saw yesterday as we head through the weekend and into next week. This is a sort of quasi-zonal flow that doesn't do anything for us in terms of rain, but it does help to keep temperatures uh, closer to average than what we saw yesterday. Now let's get into more of the detail. And I'll show you the HRRR. And as we go through the afternoon, you can see these little cells popping up in the Sierra. This is this afternoon around 5, 6 o'clock. So if we have enough clear skies over the valley, it's one of those days you'll be able to see those big towering thunderheads up over the crest of the Sierra. And it's always interesting when these things pop up when you have this. It's, if you're from, if you're, let's say, in Davis, um, or in Modesto, um, and you're looking to the east, it looks like these things aren't very far away, but they're actually on the crest of the Sierra and sometimes on the east side of the Sierra. That all dissipates as we go through the night tonight and then during the day tomorrow. Tomorrow is probably going to be the better thunderstorm day. This is once again in the late afternoon, thunderstorms on the crest of the Sierra, as well as down over uh, maybe some showers getting down into maybe the mid-levels of uh, Tuolumne County around 4,000 feet. All right, so there's the, there's the thunderstorms. Now, usually when we start to get into thunderstorms, we also talk about instability. So let's take a look at the instability. And the, what I always look at here is the most unstable layer. Now, you look at that, you see some instability over the valley. And you look at these numbers here. If I scroll over this, we have Cape of around 2,000. You know, usually for the valley, we get excited with that, with Cape maybe around 700. And we have Cape in the valley that's, well, three, 400. At least that shows that the air is somewhat unstable. But look at that. Cape of 2,500. That's almost Midwest kind of stuff. And as let's go into the day on Wednesday because this will be even more pronounced. All right, look at that. 
high levels of, of K. Now that's the most unstable layer. If you look at the surface based, it looks a little bit different. Instead, we have these layers that are somewhat hatched on here. And so now I'm going to introduce you to something that we um, have not talked about before, and that's called convective inhibition, C-I-N or C-I-N-H um, on some of the models. So if I scroll over this area here, you see the CAPE is, uh, is 150, that's the top line. The CIN, the second layer, is minus 223. That means that there is inhibition for the uh, parcels to rise through the atmosphere. So it inhibits thunderstorm growth. Conversely, if we go up here to the Sierra, the CAPE is 480 on this one, but the SIN is only minus three. Another way of looking at that. So over the valley, here is the virtual sounding. And what we have here is a, a lapse rate that's relatively steep down near the surface. But then you have this area here, an inversion. And this is the area of convective inhibition. So in other words, parcels from the valley floor are going to have a tough time breaking through, and this is what we call a cap in here, in order to break through and keep on rising. So that's why you don't get even though this on this particular sounding it's showing Cape in the Valley over a thousand, um, the the convective inhibition is minus 193 from the surface, and from the um, higher elevations it's even higher. So that's why you don't get the thunderstorms over the valley. However, if you look at uh, sounding from the Sierra, because the Sierra is also higher based. The, the base in the Sierra is up here around oh, 800, 780 millibars, something like that. Instead, you have a very steep lapse rate at the bottom. You don't have an inversion, and here's where you can get uh, thunderstorms rising. And then down here in the fine print, it shows the CINH, the convective inhibition, is near zero with a surface base cape of 2700. So that's why the Sierra will be seeing thunderstorms the next couple of days and the valley will not, despite the fact, let's see, do I have, yeah, I have the NAM nest. I think the, some, of the, uh, some of the versions of the NAM nest looked really interesting. Like here, uh, like this, 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 looks, this looks incredible. In here, Cape around, uh, you know, 2000, even over the valley, Cape well into the range that we think that is, uh, is good enough to produce thunderstorms, but it's just not going to happen. Here we have Cape of 800, but there's enough convective inhibition that you don't have that. But you go into the high Sierra, you lose the convective inhibition. So that's why things are going to be uh, rather interesting the next uh, couple of days uh, with um, thunderstorms popping over the valley. And even though we have some moisture and some relative instability over the valley and the foothills, you're not going to get the thunderstorms because of what's going on aloft. You know, quite often we talk about the lapse rates and it's in a very simplified form. If you heat up the valley on the, on the sounding and you cool off the upper layers, you're going to get a steep lapse rate. But often what happens is in between, you may have a slightly warmer layer in between, which prevents the surface moisture from rising and giving you those big towering thunderheads. And that's what will happen today over the valley and the foothills. But in the Sierra, without that in-between layer, we'll be able to pop those thunderstorms. So if you are in the high Sierra today, you may run into some downpours, maybe even some small hail. Uh, but uh, other than that, you know, they'll pop up in the afternoon, they'll dissipate in the evening, and they'll do that for the next couple of days. And for the rest of us, what we'll be talking about is cooler days, still comfortable, but I heard some people griping about the heat yesterday, 89 degrees. Yeah, you know, just kind of a preview of coming attractions as we head through the second half of April and toward May. That's everything I've got for you on this Tuesday morning. Make it a great day. I'll talk with you later.